Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Um, big hello to all the new subscribers. Welcome. Oh, man. Almost don't even know where to start on this one. We are back on the Yamaha 15 two-stroker with no power. Wow. Um, I do believe I have found the issue. And uh, it's one of these things that uh, I don't even know how to explain to you. You'll see it. It'll be crystal clear what's wrong with this motor. But how we got to the where we're at with this motor that's the part that I cannot explain to you um, you will you will see it though in the video um, before I get to the actual problems or problem I'm going to back up and I'm going to show you everything I did to the motor to to get to the point where I found the problem and and I'll explain why it took me a little while to find it okay in the first video that I uploaded on this motor um, April 16th in that video it was titled Yamaha 15 two-stroke no power in that video um, that's when we first took the motor in and started on it and we did a fax check on it and then we went from there and then later in the video we did test running it on the water and you could see the the terrible lack of power it had alright so I got it back in got it back off the boat and into the tank and I went from there started going over through the process of elimination and uh, I think we got there but uh, we took the long way for sure so I'm gonna show you the videos coming up will be what I did to the motor and how I came to the conclusion and uh, so we're gonna start right there let's get at it
little gapage. Right there, ridge. And probably some guide pins. And yes. More. I don't see let me look real good but I don't see any problems with those reeds they are all nice and flat let me check for the spring bounce a leo Now you see I'm taking this old platypus looking tool so I don't hurt them reeds in any kind of way. They seem to be strong. They pop back nice. Now I'm going to step off camera and take my flashlight and shine right in there and I'm going to Go in a dark room and see if I see any light whatsoever coming through them. But as far as their spring back and stuff, it's real good. Snap, snap, snap. Snap, snap, snap. I mean, they pop back good. Nothing's loose. Everything, toit. It's toit. Gasket looks... Good. It's kind of a pressed in gasket, but it, I mean, they pressed it in and then they put some gookum there to. Same with the front one. But I don't see no rips or tears or nothing in it. You know, it's it's all pretty good looking. Let me go do a flashlight test. I'll be. Okay, so here's the carb. To the Yamaha 15. I've taken everything, the fuel pump apart. Those gaskets look pretty good. I freshened everything with a, a little Vaseline. Um, I cleaned out both jets, as you can see. I got my little e -e 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 back and forth through all those holes that way and that way. So I've cleaned those. Here's your uh, high speed jet. E -e 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 it's all clean there. Everything's clean. I ran the body through the ultrasonic cleaner. As you can see, it looks pristine in there. I saw no real issues when I took the carb apart. A little bit of maybe some dirty looking puddles of gas in the corner, but nothing, nothing really. Um, transition chamber and all those, I've clean those out real well these little bitty holes that are right up under here where it transitions from I would say the carb is not an issue now the jets sizes um, there you go the jet sizes for the low jet um, was 48 I wrote it down right here and for the high jet, the number stamped on it was 110. Now I'll have to look at those and see what they're supposed to be, but that's what's on there. So this was 110. I got out my 
magnifying eyeballs so I could see it and it says 110 on it so and then I, I clean the emulsion pickup tube it's all good and clean in there and so the carburetor I would say looks really good and it is really clean right now so I'm just gonna go ahead and same with the fuel pump I freshened up that gasket with a little bit of a uh, Vaseline and uh, that look good so let me get the car back together and we're going to check a few other things I'll be right back okay I wanted to show you the float in there and all and also the needle and seat you can't see it in there but it lifts really easy real nice it's uh it looks really good the needles nice and free and the float looks nice and proper so just wanted to show that I did check the needle and see it all looks good okay so we got done with the carb I pulled that off as you can see we pulled the reeds off looked at the reeds now remember when we started this I did a spark check and I did a compression check and the compression numbers on this thing according to my compression tester were right at 125 a piece well we cleaned up this carburetor and the old carburetor looked good looks brand new inside and out I cleaned it ultrasonically I cleaned it with compressed air carb cleaner needles everything that carburetor is good and clean and good now we pulled off the flywheel to look under there yeah there was some light rust light rust should not affect um, the firing system on this and it didn't we had good hot spark on top and bottom so so we had to do some more digging around I did go ahead and clean everything up on the flywheel and everything I wire wheeled the inside of it got it all clean but I do believe I found the problem now how I overlooked it that part I'm still doing this because I'm not sure I got some things going on in my little pee up here but I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure but I'm gonna show you what we found but First, people told me to look at the uh, the flywheel key, look if the engine was advancing for the timing properly and so forth. Those appeared to be all normal and working properly. So then I had other people say, well, I had one like that, and uh, it ended up being the exhaust port itself, that area in the upper, up in the... Uh, um, crankcase where it exhausts out of the exhaust port and then down into the leg because I did check the lower leg and all that but I did not check the exhaust port until now and I did so what do we find what do we find there was that it let's look let's look I show you I show you now I'm gonna try and get you down even lower so Lower it is. Okay. It's about as low as it'll go, I think. But let me get you some light in there. Okay. There's the exhaust port. This wet stuff is here is where I put a little permatex because the gasket was coming off. I didn't want it to come off. I wanted it to stay there. But you can see, hopefully down in there, you can see the exhaust port coming through the I mean the exhaust going down into the lake through the exhaust port is wide open it is completely wide open there's no clogging issues there whatsoever 
and you can't see it on camera but the top piston you can watch go up and down right there it's clear as a bell too so the exhaust port is all clear now here is the inner cover to it and it's all clear as well no big chunks of carbon just some little pieces but those little ones are interesting but uh, that's all I found there. And then there's the outer exhaust port cover. Uh, right there. And it's pretty clean too. A little salt residue, but you know, nothing there that's going to cause an engine to run bad. But now, we got some other issues. I have to bring you over here. Actually, let me get set up a little bit. Well, now, so far, so good. But before we go any further, I've got to show you two things. Um, the first, I want to show you my compression gauge. You can see right there. Let me make sure. Okay, there's the zero mark. So, right in there would be your 125 mark, right about there. I have to say 10 o'clock position. Okay. This is an old Sears compression tester. I've had it for years. It has always been spot on, very reliable. I have never had a problem with this tester here in 20 plus years, two decades of use. It's always been very reliable. The reason why I said I wanted to show you this and show you the markings on it is because the next thing I want to show you I want to go back to the April 16th video and I'm going to show you a, a clip from that video. I cut out of that video and I want you to watch the compression test that I do in that video. Go. Okay, we're on the bottom cylinder here. You can see we are zero. Let's do a little pull over too. We are at a hundred and about a hundred and twenty six, hundred and twenty seven, something like that. Hundred and twenty, twenty five, twenty six. That's on the bottom. Let's look at the top. Okay, we are at zero. Let's give her a two or three or four. Okay, we are at 125, about 127, a little past 125 mark. So, that's the compressionis you understand us, I speak at us, but us. Okay. So, 
in addition to pulling the side exhaust port cover and so forth I said I'm gonna pull that head now the first thing we want to look at is the bottom cylinder let me get you there can you see I hope you can let me move something real quick see that there's some pretty heavy-duty scoring right there on that bottom cylinder hopefully you can see that right in here see that and I can hook this needle on it just a little, but it, it, there's some scoring there. And I can't tell on the piston on that area right there because that's on the inside of the piston. But there's definitely some scoring on that cylinder. Hopefully you can see what I'm seeing there. All right. Now, let's come up to the top one. Stupid thing. Okay. All right. Let's turn this down. So the bottom's up, top dead. Now looky here. Look at that. Can you see that? all right in here and it's pitted and you can definitely catch all kind of grab on that on both sides right there's a big one. so that top cylinder hopefully you can see that has quite a bit of heck I don't know what you'd call that but it ain't right whatever it is it is all discolored uh, it's, it's actually got some pretty big marring and pitting in there yeah I mean that's more than catch a nail stuff looks like it's been laid down on there a bunch of rust or something got in there is what I thought but all right so now let's look at the top of that piston I don't know if you can see it but there's all kind of little indentations and stuff now Okay. Oh boy. So, I'm going to come out here a little bit where the light's just a little better and show you this. Now, this is the bottom cylinder of the head. Okay, this is the bottom. There's your top, where your thermostat is. So that's your bottom. And there's a little bit of blackness there, a little bit of oil. But overall, it's nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. Now, let's look at the top. Look at the top. You see all that pitting in there? Compare it to the bottom there. Bottom's all smooth. Top 
has quite a bit of pitting and stuff in there. You can see some rust around that head gasket area. Or maybe it was letting a little water through. But you can definitely see some pitting in that top cylinder crown. Hopefully the camera will pick this up. But it's got some definite pitting along, along there. And then we've got the scoring. So you know and if you look, let's look. If you look at the top of this piston, the bottom piston there, you know, there's a little bit of something going on. It looks like in the center. I don't know if that could be part of the casting. But, um, <laughs> if you look at that top, right up and through here and all through here, there, there is quite a bit of pitting in that. So, okay, hopefully I've got you. You can see in through there. See my light? Okay. Now, you'll be able to see the piston come up. Watch the top piston right up in there. Okay, there's the top of the piston right here. Okay, now watch and look toward the top side of the piston. See that? You see that scoring? It's all scored. And, and it's pretty significant. The rings, as far as I can tell, but that scoring goes about... Oh, there it comes again. You see it? And then there's your rings. The rings look okay. They, they do look kind of... They don't have much spring to them, though. I'd say that bottom ring may be even stuck. But you can see the scoring up there. There it is. Right there. So, ho, ho. Now, how did the compression test score 125 on that? And this thing start, idle, and run as well as it did. Oh boy. Okay. This is how I feel. But no, I am not joking. Um, what you saw is how it played out. Um, I wish I was the jokester. But I'm not. Um, the mystery of the no power situation is solved. Um, there is no question, there is no doubt in my mind that the reason why this engine has no top end power is because the cylinders and pistons are roached. This engine is a parts engine from here out. Um, cause. I do believe it was carbon. Um, 
I believe that hard pieces of carbon got into the cylinders, especially the top cylinder, and did the scoring. I may be wrong on that. I hope I get the opportunity to tear this engine completely down and um, look in there further. That'll be the owner's choice, whether he wants to haul it back to the mainland and do something with it himself. He's out in the bush right now guiding bear hunters and won't be back in for another two weeks or so. So, um, the compression test. When I started this motor, this little Yamaha 15, the very first video I put up on it, at the same time that I started this 15, I was working on a 25 Mariner, a four-stroke Tahatsu, just doing an initial inspection of that one, and I was messing with a freebie I got, a Suzuki 15 four-stroke. I had all four of those engines being um, messed with at the same time. Not a good plan. No. But that's what I did. So, when I finally found the cylinder issues, and by the way, I found that by taking off the exhaust port cover, not the cylinder head. The cylinder head came off after I saw what I saw on that top cylinder through the exhaust port cover. Um, I thought to myself, I must have got confused. Those 127 compression numbers must have been off one of those other motors because there's no way, if I've learned anything over a few decades of doing this, is that compression test, compression test, compression, always, 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 before you put a minute of your time into a motor, you get those compression numbers. And I thought, did I get confused with one of these other motors thinking I did the compression test on it. So I went back and watched the April 16th video. Nope. I did a full fax check on that motor. I did a compression check. The numbers were about 126, 127 per cylinder. No diurnal range difference between the two. Um, I cannot explain it. So hopefully some of you heavy hitters out there, I had a situation like this many years ago on a little old 50s era Johnson that uh, um, kind of fooled me on some compression numbers, but uh, totally different, totally different motor and totally different uh, situation. So I can't explain it. I wish I could, but I do know one thing. The mystery is solved. The problem of this motor having no um, top end power, even though it idles smooth, starts easy, is those cylinders and that piston. So that's my take on it. That's how I feel. Um, please comment. If, if you obviously in the video see that I missed something or something, throw it out. I am happy to, to hear it and take it. So anyway, thanks for watching and that's one more hack from Cody Yak. Thanks. Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.